Hey folks, um, we're in a big van now, as you can see from our previous video. This is our first rodeo in the new van. I was hoping to get some um, Backyard Avery stickers to put on it, but they haven't arrived. I was hoping they were going to arrive today. Never mind. We'll stick them on. But, initially, we, we just literally just bought a sandwich, we're about to eat it. It's nearly 8 o'clock, so we're running a bit late this evening. Um, we're going to head up to Kendall, hopefully to see a common rose finch that's been there for a while, sporadically, so fingers crossed. Then over to the east coast to try and find a marsh warbler that was there yesterday, and I think today. Then we're going to go uh, up to Northumberland. I've booked us on a boat trip. Um, to go and try and see roseate terns. So, although they are a British species, I've seen them before a couple of times, but Katie hasn't. No. And this is one that she really wants to tick off her list. This is also um, potentially going to be the trip we get Kaylee's 400th bird she's ever seen. So, uh, she's on 399. Um, she had the great snipe on the last video. So, fingers crossed for that, because that's going to be pretty cool. Yeah. That's going to be party time. So stick with us, this should be really good fun and a bit more comfortable in our little camp. Although we did leave late, it was only a couple of hours drive up towards Kendall. Hi folks, um, we're here in Cumbria, very near Kendall. Um, in a very civilised... Yeah, so we've got an incense <laughs> stick burning. Oh, I've got wine and some ale and it's like a... All very civilised compared to normal in our, in our camper. Anyway, we're just about to chill out and watch a movie, then go to sleep, and hopefully in the morning see a common rose finch all being well. It's been a bit sporadically seen, so uh, I'm not holding out great hope, but I'm quietly optimistic. We'll see. Anyway, see you in the morning, folks. Night. Night, night. We parked only about 10 minutes drive from where the rose finch had been seen. Good morning all, it's a lovely morning. Um, we're at a place called Scout Scar Car Park, which is near Candle, which, uh, which is very, very pretty. It's like in a little mini quarry type thing. I'll show you in a minute. There's a couple of other campers here as well as us. Um, and it's about 6 in the morning. I'm awake. Kelly isn't quite awake yet. Um, when we're awake, we'll make breakfast and then head out and see if we can find a common rose finch. I headed back to the van where Kaylee was cooking breakfast. What are you doing, babe? Yeah, hello. We're in the lovely town of Kendall, um, heading towards where a common rose finch has been seen on and off for, geez, a while. Um, so we thought we'd head up here and try and get Kaylee's 400th lifer, her 400th bird since she's been birding. So keep with us, this will be really cool. We're only three minutes away. Woo! We arrived at Plumgarths, which is a Cumbria Wildlife Trust garden. The rose finch had previously been seen in the vicinity of this garden. Upon arrival, we were struck how pretty the garden was, with many wild flowers and some quite rare orchids too. We found a few other birders who'd heard the finch but not seen it. Before long, one of the birders received a phone call from a friend who had seen the bird, just a stone's throw away, next to a few houses, so we raced up there. And pretty soon it showed up. It flitted between some telegraph wires and some low trees, giving us quite reasonable views. Hey folks, we've just got the common rose finch. It wasn't in the Wildlife Trust garden as we thought it would. One of the birders had a contact who took us a little bit up the road and it was just outside someone's garden. Uh, but we got some fleeting but pretty close views of it it was pretty confiding singing that's brilliant and it's a lifer also it's kaylee's 400th bird so that's a cause for celebration we're going to travel east now it's uh, certainly a couple of hours we're going to hope there's a marsh warbler there there was yesterday 
so this is a bit of a chance if things might change um, and we'll keep you posted so keep with us we headed from Cumbria east towards the east coast we did stop on route at RSPB Saltholm hello Hey folks, we're at Saltholm RSPB, we stopped off on route. There's a great reed warbler here. We have seen one of these before at Snettersham in Norfolk. Uh, it was a brief view. This time we've gone to have a look. Apparently the receptionist said to us, you're unlikely to see it, but you probably hear it, which uh, sounds quite right for most warblers. <laughs> but hey ho, we'll have a quick look round here and then on to another warbler we'll probably hear and not see, which is a marsh warbler about 45 minutes away. Another one we'll just hear. Yeah, probably. <laughs> one thing we were warned about when we arrived and we did see reasonably quickly was how much this reserve had been affected by avian flu. There are a large number of dead gulls strewn across the islands in which they should be breeding. One of the staff mentioned it had really affected their black headed gulls and he was really hoping that it wasn't going to affect their common tern colony. One great thing I did notice was this artificial sandbank being used by many sand martins. But back to the great reed warbler. Yep. Hey folks, we've just nipped to Saltholm to see if we can find see a great reed warbler, and it's a no show. Um, it's in an enormous area; you can hear it. You've got no <laughs> But there's people that have been here for hours and heard it and not seen it. So we heard it. We did hear it. We did hear it. So anyway. Um, we're not going to stick around in the reserve, although we do know it's a cool reserve because I've been here before. We're going to head straight to the Marsh Warbler, it's about 45 minutes away. Because that has been um, seen. That has been seen today. So fingers crossed. Yeah. Fingers crossed that one, and that is a lifer. We then drove about 45 minutes down the coast to a very pretty little village on the edge of some cliffs. This is where a Marsh Warbler had been seen and heard singing. When we got there, we almost immediately heard the bird, but it didn't come into view. We kept on listening and looking, also looking out to sea, watching the wonderful gulls and fulmers flying past. Eventually, a small bird flitted in and out of the bush where we'd heard the marsh warbler singing. It was too quick to confirm if it was that bird. The same bird then flew out into some vegetation. We then waited half an hour or so for it to come back, but it didn't. Hey folks, uh, on the Marsh Warbler, it's a beautiful place, we've come to have a look. Um, we heard it, definitely in a bush, yeah. and we saw a bird coming in and definitely going out the bush, and then it stopped singing, or the singing stopped. So we're pretty convinced we saw it, although not certain enough to guarantee. confirm it and guarantee it, yeah. So we might have to save that one for another time. So we're going up the coast towards um, Northumberland now. We've got a boat trip booked at half seven to go and try and find Rosie Eight Turns, as they, these are lifers for Kaylee, um, and she's getting me on a boat again. <laughs> you just on... had me on a cliff edge. So. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> fair enough. Um, yeah, so we're heading there, and on the way, there's a pectoral sandpaper apparently, which is a bird we have seen before, but it's an interesting one nevertheless, as it's a visitor from America. So hopefully we'll pick that one up on the way. We went then to Drew Ridge Pools. Hey, we're here at Drew Ridge um, Nature Reserve. It's not far from Creswell. Oh, there's a hide here. This might be useful. Looking for a pectoral sandpaper. We can't figure out where it's at, so we're going to just keep on looking at hides and screens until we can find some. Not initially knowing exactly where the pectoral sandpaper had been seen, we just walked around the area looking for hides. The first hide we found was over a small bit of water. There were a few ducks there, including the shoveler and also this shell duck. If it's been in the hide, not found it yet. Um, trying to find out quite where it is. Um, no sign at all, we've had a look on our bird app and can't quite decipher exactly where it's been seen but we'll continue for another 20 minutes to half an hour and then we've got a boat trip booked. Rosie turns. <laughs> Try and find some roseate turns. Should be fun. After arriving at the right hide we found another birder who was looking for the pectoral sandpiper. Although it had recently been seen, it had been seen at quite a distance 
and the sun was really low right in front of us, making most of the birds into silhouettes. We did scan as best we could. Hey folks, uh, failure on the pectoral sandpiper, which is unfortunate, we've had three blanks in a row today. Not so great, but we went to the screen where it had been seen earlier today, but as the sun was coming down, the light was terrible. Um, we had a look, but no sight, so uh, we did see some nice snipe though. Anyway, on towards a boat trip. Now it was time to go to Amble for our boat trip. My stomach was already feeling queasy by the thought of it, but we went to the dock to wait for our boat. Whilst waiting for the boat in the harbour, we did notice this preening ida and this female red-breasted meganza trying to catch some fish. Soon enough, our boat arrived and we climbed on. Kaylee was very excited. The boat set off. At this point, the sea was reasonably calm. As we got further out towards Cockett Island, things started to change a bit. Regardless, I held onto my stomach, and as we got near the island, it calmed again a little. It's gone green already. But the first views here were of a number of puffins that were on the island. These birds are always fun and entertaining. There were loads of black-headed gulls, the boat took us alongside the island and then went a bit further up and turned around. Whilst it was turning around, there was a lot of very interested seals coming close up to the boat. Once the boat was turned around, we headed back towards the area where we hoped to see roseate turns. We passed a sandbank with loads and loads of seals. I saw some other turns, including these sandwich turns that seemed to be very friendly with each other. Just then, we did see a rose 8 turn. I tried to get it in the video and I've had to slow it down so it's not quite as shaky as the boat was moving. Ultimately, this was a beautiful bird to see and as we went on a little further, I got a couple of photos of these two rose 8 turns quite close, passing each other fish in a mating display. This was a great privilege to see and another life of a cave. She was pleased and she's always happy on a boat, certainly happier than my tummy was. It was then time to go back, we said goodbye to the puffins and some idas that were on the bank as we left and headed back towards the mainland. By this point I was feeling particularly queasy. When we got into the dock there was an ida to greet us and then it was time to find our overnight parking spot which was at the end of a country lane near some sand dunes. Hey folks, it's the end of the day. I know we look extremely exhausted, it's because we are. Um, today's been a bit of a mix. We've seen the common rose finch and the roseate turns on the boat trip, which was ace. We missed the um, great reed warbler which wasn't a lifer anyway, but the marsh warbler was. We actually think we probably saw that, but we can't guarantee it. So um, tomorrow we haven't really made any kind of definitive arrangements yet, but we may kind of revisit one of the things we didn't see today. Um, just stick with us. What are you thinking? There's a bird down the road. Oh, pectoral sandpiper, yeah. That's literally a few minutes away, so we might do that one anyway, regardless of what we do. Yeah, first thing. It might be worth having a quick look. And then go from there. Mm. Um, anyway, we'll, uh, we'll see you in the morning. Night-night. Night. Morning, folks. It's about 7 o'clock in the morning. We're in a little kind of end of a lay-by down a country road um, by the beach. It's absolutely gorgeous. Um, it's about seven o'clock. I'm just having a once over to see what's around. I woke up in the morning to a great many bird calls, so I thought I'd get up and investigate. Walking round, there was some reed beds and also some scrub and low bushes. In the reed beds, there was quite a few sedge warblers flitting up and down. They were almost impossible to get a picture of. 
Ultimately, I found this sedge warbler singing in some low vegetation. Another bird I was hearing a lot but not seeing, as usual, was the Chetty's warbler. But then I was lucky enough to catch a few brief videos of this individual, which was great. Other birds around included this reed bunting and a few singing chiff chaff. Once we'd had breakfast we took a little walk together and found this hide overlooking some water where there was a lot of roosting gulls and terns including black headed gull, common tern and also sandwich tern. We decided now was the time to head back to see if we could get the pectoral sandpiper that we missed the previous day. Morning all. We've got to head home today. Shame. <laughs> but uh, we've come back first. Oh, I'm getting lost We're already. already. We're going back first to where we tried to see the pectoral sandpiper last evening, or yesterday evening, um, where we, we had no chance because the light was right against us. So, um, yeah, we're going to whip through, try and find that, and then after that, I'm not sure, we might try and pick something up on the way home if there's anything about. So stick with us, we'll take you along. Looking out of the hide this time, the light was much better. The birds present were much the same as the previous night, although I did see this one common turn. There was a number of red shank, a shell duck whose chick was copying it preening, which I found quite comical and a lovely snipe that was feeding really close in but no pectoral sandpiper right we didn't get the pectoral sandpiper but there was quite a lot of other stuff there and we bumped into a very uh, very friendly other birder who yeah very interesting we talked about some foreign countries and some birding around the UK and it was a uh, it was tip top so. hi folks I'm not entirely sure where we're going, now we're going to head towards home and see if we can pick something up on the way. So join us for the ride. We headed home but there was so much traffic. We were on the road for hours so needed a pit stop. So hey folks, after possibly the worst eating out experience we've ever had in a uh, OK diner, yeah it was pretty bad. Um, in an okay dining in Middlesbrough and then hitting hours and I mean hours of traffic um, we decided to take a pit stop at Pennington Flash we haven't got too long maybe 45 minutes or so um, we're going to have a little walk around yeah hopefully not not to get more stuck in more traffic but anyway we're going to have a bit of a look here and see if there's any birdies about before we go home to our girlies let's see what we see Pennington Flash was busy with people and also, as normal, swans and geese waiting to be fed. We headed past all the people onto the nature trail and found a hide. When looking out, there was great crested grebe, quite close. That wasn't the only grebe, I saw in the distance this little grebe. There was this wonderful oyster catcher having a very lively bath. And across over near a reed bed, there was a grey heron. This grey heron wasn't allowed to fish because it was being mobbed by some angry lapwing whose nests must have been close. The heron promptly left and the lapwing looked positively victorious. Another treat out of one of the hides before we left was this kingfisher who sat on a post. Kaylee noticed them at quite a distance. The kingfisher then flew closer to us and we got some really nice views. In the last hide, there was plenty of black-headed gulls with chicks. This view in the distance of a black-headed gull chick trying to get food off his parents and not really succeeding. Now it was time to go home to the backyard Avery. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, please subscribe and please press the notification bell. We appreciate all your support. See you soon.